My name is Liv. I used to be passionate, inspired, alive. Now I'm mostly just hungry and a zombie, so there's that. As day jobs go, this one was pretty grim. Until I got a taste of something more. Why the hot sauce? Is that a zombie thing? It's finally here. I've been terrified about somebody finding out about me for months, and you're acting like it's the measles. When I eat a brain, I get visions. Flashes of dreams or memories. Dr. Death, what's the story with my Jane Doe? No idea yet? She was arrested in 2008. How'd you know that? Liv is a psychic. Ish. I can't refuse to be dead. I can't tell the people I love what's going on with me. But I can choose to help find justice. Calling out. You're my alibi that I'm still alive. Calling out. I saw you get shot. He missed. I played dead, and then I guess I chased his car. <laughs> Seriously, how did you solve crime before me? I thought I was the only one. Until like three seconds ago, so did I. Hi, everybody. And today I'm just going to be talking about uh, the premiere episode of iZombie. I saw it just over 48 hours ago at the Wizard World Comic Con Indianapolis Con. <laughs> they had the Indianapolis premiere there. And I made sure I had a seat in the front row to watch it because I love zombies. I'm still trying to read through the iZombie comics. So I wanted to see how this was like. I mean, DC seems to get the grasp on what to do for TV. Much better than Marvel. I mean, right now, Marvel has, uh, I think, a couple of cartoons, but only two live action shows. While DC has, uh, like, three live-action shows going on now, with iZombie coming, that's going to be a fourth. And currently, one anime that I know of, but DC does have at least three, maybe four more live-action shows coming, and who knows about animated. They, they always tend to have one or two in their pocket every year. <clears throat> so, this is going to be another live-action. It's going to be on the CW, coming, what is it? March 17th, I do believe. And it's going to be on Tuesdays, 9 o'clock, right after The Flash. So you get like two days straight of CW, the DC shows. And then Monday is the Gotham on Fox, so there's another DC show. And then Cartoon Network has Teen Titans Go, DC cartoon. So there you go, like more than half the week, DC has TV. Marvel just has Tuesdays on ABC. It's a good. Sh they have good shows too. It's just not that many. But they're still expanding. Marvel's leading the way in movies, but DC has a firm grip on pretty much everything TV. <clears throat> so, so I saw that, and I just want to say that the show is a uh, created by the same guy who did Veronica Mars. I never watched it. I didn't think it was that interesting. I hear mixed things about people loving it and people not liking how it was done. <clears throat> so, I don't care about Veronica Mars. And already a lot of people just stopped watching this video. Anyway, but I did see this <clears throat> about a month, yeah, pretty much a month before it premiered. And I didn't think it was that good. Uh, so the star is a Rose McVerer, I think her name is. So she plays Liv, supposedly the same character from the comic. She becomes a zombie. I do like how they explain how she became a zombie. They actually do that here. She got scratched by another zombie while at a party, and apparently this is universe, this, this is one zombie virus anyway, came from a man-made drug a man-made recreational drug so it was at a party so there were people were trying it out and people that did turn to zombies and apparently Liv was one person who didn't try to drug but apparently she got scratched by a zombie which led her to becoming a zombie while all the other zombies presumably died 
in the fire, even though they showed uh, quite a few bodies still intact as they were putting in body bags. <clears throat> kind of makes me wonder how they died or what's going on there. Maybe government cover up or something. So, right off the bat, major expedition dumps about who people are, what they're doing, how they feel about each other, and what their role is in life. <clears throat> so, for the first episode, this feels super rough. The way that they're just dumping everything and uh, showing off all the places and such. But, I gotta say, that's a premiere episode, a first episode. Good chance that this is really a pilot episode. So it could be one of the shows where they thought the pilot was just good enough where it could roll into the rest of the series instead of actually reshooting it. So <clears throat> I have to give it give it leeway to that. But I'm still criticizing it. So there's a lot of internal monologue for her. A lot. I mean, in the comics, it worked off because it doesn't focus on her. I mean, I got the first trade here, which has, I think, like the first five issues and a bonus story. It doesn't say on the back, but yeah, like about the yeah, sh first five issues, because issue six is a standalone. And so it jumps around on, on this trade, where it's okay for her to have an inner dialogue, because it's comics, totally different medium. Because it's that you read it. That's, that's the one way you get the feel of how people are and how the world is built. You're by narrator or people talking or whatever, just text bubbles <clears throat> or text word or box words, whatever they are. So you read it. So it, it feels natural in a comic. But in a show like this, it, it's pretty much like the whole show. They just had her sit in front of a microphone. So she just speak over everything. Just, just wasn't quite. It's, it's just too much. I mean, a little bit, yeah, could have been cute, but they just barreled down on all of this. So it's just a lot of that, and of course, it's just a lot about how she feels and what's going on and just stuff that she's doing that she talks about, about how everybody else that we get to know them, they actually. Meant spell out their whole life story when you first see them, pretty much. Probably not the whole life story, but their point in their life where they are, about how they feel about the main character, what they're doing right now, and probably what they're hoping to do in the future. <clears throat> I mean, they show they show off Liv as a nurse or a doctor, probably a nurse since they were waiting for a doctor, but she didn't want to wait. She saved the guy's life. Hurrah! So another nurse asked her out to go to a party with her. And Liv says, oh, I can't believe that you're inviting me the stuck up so so that it's always too perfect that nobody likes and the owner said yeah that is how we all feel but I'm trying to give you a chance here and, and then she then Liv walks across the street to her fiance says oh we've been in love for so many years I can't wait for all these months can you believe that the well the nurses are fighting me even though they think that I'm like this they're just spilling out everything not really much that you could build on and and then, then it skips ahead after she's a zombie. Was it five months, I think? And so now she works in the morgue at the corner office, and she's an assistant, I do believe, to the head guy. And as soon as we, she walks in the office and sees him, he spells out his story about they've been working together for so long. She's so good at it, and, and he's doing this. She does that. He says all this. <clears throat> it, they just spelled out a lot, and then. Then the detective that she works with, he comes in shortly after when they're after he after the coroner finds out that she's a zombie because apparently he suspected for quite a while now and he just finally comes out and just admits it while well, caught her red-handed with brains in her mouth. So a detective comes in asking about a murder victim or at least a body that they found in a dumpster that could have been a murder and. He just pretty much explains that, yeah, he's trying to figure out his first case and such. He doesn't give off his whole story when you first see him, but when you see him next, he does. But then again, 
when he goes off this second part of it, when we see him again, he gives off the rest of the story. It sort of makes sense. He's explaining to Liv why all the other cops are making fun of him in the office because he's a new homicide detective and he's going off uh, some bad information or something, so they're making fun of him. So that that part was all right. That that felt natural. So that's everybody else, like. <clears throat> Like when she goes to her first apartment, the, she opens the door, and then there's a woman there. Says, "Oh, hey, uh, if isn't the best roommate in the world." And then she walks in the kitchen. Her brother, mother, and fiance are there. <laughs> uh, mother says that she just thinks the best, thinks that she should just go back with her fiance, who's standing right there, and that she's been concerned of her, and that she shouldn't give up her career, and her, and that as her mother, she thinks that this is what's best for her, and that. Her brother also thinks that too, and her brother, who's right next to mother, says, uh, actually, no, I don't. I don't care about anything. I don't care what she does. So, yeah, it's just everybody tells everything. And Liv's narration just goes on and on, not really telling anything, just what she thinks, what she fear, feels, and what she is doing. A lot of hypothetical stuff. I mean, it doesn't even do Family Guy territory where it does little skits. <clears throat> I don't know. I think it'd be funny to have little skits every once in a while of her tearing her friends apart. <clears throat> Probably make the show a lot more tolerable for me. Well, <clears throat> so, yeah, apparently also in this zombie universe, there zombies are in pop culture. Like, she actually went to a grocery store and bought this this type of not at the Walking Dead DVD. Like, I got right here. I had this for a few years now because it has a commentary on it, so gotta love commentaries. And she bought the exact same type. <clears throat> so, zombies are a thing. In fact, there's one scene where she goes up to her fiance's house trying to say that there's probably hope in the future where they can get back together. She looks through the window and sees him playing, I'm guessing, his dying light on TV using Xbox One controllers, which. It's kind of odd because the show them both holding controllers means that they're probably playing together. So unless there's a second TV there that they didn't show, that game isn't really a multiplayer game, as far as I know. <clears throat> so zombies are a thing. She even mentions George Romero a few times. Doesn't want to do. Doesn't want to be that type of zombie. So yeah, her thing is is that if she doesn't eat brains every once in a while, she starts to get fuzzy. The start loses memories, but she eats brains. Every, she uh, maintains her memories and doesn't get that much urge to attack people. And as a side effect, she gets mixes of memories of the brain that she ate, just random bits, and they have to be triggered during certain things. Unlike in the comic, where she gets she eats the brain and she gets a flood of memories, pretty much right off the bat. It's pretty much like a second voice in her head. And I think once or twice she had to fight the urge to follow the urges of what's in her head, knowing that they will eventually fade away. I know it's a TV show, so they have to do things differently. Like the morgue thing, that's a good idea. Because in the comic, she had to work in a cemetery where the bodies are buried naturally without being embalmed. So that way she could eat the brains properly, but... It's just there's a just having her have to have things trigger. I mean, she does the brain she did eat in uh, this first episode. Apparently, the woman was a bit of a kleptomaniac, so she stole things every once in a while. So she live uh, tends to pick up little red things now and then. She noted earlier that for some reason she had to pick up red objects, and then you see her do that. Then she finds out why. And then she overcomes it, saying that no memory is supposed to take control of her. I mean, that was a nice touch, but the whole memory thing, I mean, that that, that was sort of a subconscious, but the conscious stuff that pops up that helps her with the investigation, <clears throat> those, those just seem not, doesn't mix well for me anyway, that you have to find something that triggers them. I mean, one nice touch was that she was speaking, I don't think it was Hungarian, maybe Romanian, Romanian, because they said they thought it was Russian, but it wasn't Russian, it was something else. But she just started speaking that naturally to somebody else who was speaking that. 
because the person's brain she ate that was her native language I do believe one thing I do find kind of odd is that the apparently the her family lives family they throw a haunted house every year so it uh, looks like that this is close to Halloween or about Halloween time so kind of makes me wonder if they really should have waited till Halloween to let it out then again I've been waiting for about almost two years for this show to come out when they first announced it but maybe if they waited probably would make more sense or probably if it's Halloween probably something that they could shrug off of the horror stuff that they expect to see in the show so yeah it's pretty much gonna be like every week there might be a murder she eats the brains and then she helps a detective solve the murder so it's one of those there's a murder a week things like psych or you know law and order monk but Hopefully, unlike uh, Psych and Monk, they'll add more things to it to keep it going. I mean, I watched Monk for like the first three seasons, maybe four. The, the, no, it should be three because I, I, the, the gimmick just doesn't last that long. And they don't talk about her wife that much. And then when I got the new assistant, I rewatched a bit more. And Psych, I was able to hold on to a little longer because I found it funny. It was cute. There was a lot of pop culture stuff and things I understand. So I held on that one a little longer than Monk. Law and Order, it's always a mixed bag in each episode. But, but I'm hoping that they have supernatural stuff added in this and they build the world of supernatural like they have in the in the graphic novel where in the first issue there's already zombies, there's monster hunters, and you learn about ghosts and were terriers. And eventually there's going to be a, uh, I think he's a mummy, and then lots more down the way that I'm still trying to read. Like, there's a, many different levels of ghosts and being undead. Like, they're pretty much all grouped in the... All monsters are grouped in this undead leveling thing. And then there's other monsters that are not. So, kind of wonder how they're going to incorporate that, or if they even are. Because, as I've seen in trailers, that there's going to be at least one other zombie that she'll bump into, or at least somebody zombie-like. At the end of the episode, she was eating a new brain, and she had a vision of, I think, what is going to be the zombie that they're going to run into. I don't know, it's just a quick glimpse. And let me get into the writing here that it tries to be cute while being funny. It's, it's not cute, and it's not really funny. So other people laughed. I did uh, things they said, I'm not, I didn't think it was funny. It was, Almost like almost stating the obvious or stating an odd pop, odd pop culture reference, just because it's a thing. Almost like Big Bang Theory. It feels like they're trying to be like Joss Whedon, but they just can't get it. <clears throat> so, I'm sure if Joss Whedon actually did write this, it would be a whole lot funnier, and I would enjoy it more. At least the pilot. But then again, it's a pilot. Uh, it's the pilot, so. At least it's the first episode, so good chance that it is also a pilot. So it's gonna be rough. It's gonna be first season. If they could buff things out, season two could be better. I like Walking Dead, where season two was the worst thing ever. So it could get better. At the end of the episode, when it's coming up to the climax of finding the killer and saving the lives of a couple of women. Apparently Liv somehow turned on her zombie mode, where she was able to run super fast, she was super strong. So, I don't know how they're going to work that in, or what's going on with there, but we'll see. It's like that she became like a 28 Days Later zombie, I think she probably even mentioned that. And she was about to eat the brain of the killer when the detective comes running around and then her eyes went back to normal and then and she wasn't making grunting noises so she was back to being zombie live instead of super zombie live so that's something and also her coroner boss when he finds out he was doing all the tests apparently that he's actually looking for a cure he's taking all the blood samples he's take he's put up against different diseases and viruses to see how they fight each other so he's working on a way to actually cure her whatever that'll be 
So that that's an interesting idea, but I'm pretty sure he did state at one point that her heartbeat is like 10 beats a minute, which I don't really care for that fact. I prefer her not having a heartbeat. But I guess this just opens the door of her possibly being cured. That or, who knows, maybe like I said about the comics, this is maybe a one of the levels of being undead. So, uh, there's a lot of little details I went over, but it's stuff that you can watch on the show itself. it be on the CW on um, March 17th, I do believe, at 9 p.m. right after The Flash. I don't know how much longer I'll be watching this episode. I'll try to give the first episode in our watch, at least the second one for sure. And if it doesn't start straightening up or building to something that actually catches my interest, I'm not really planning on sticking with this. I'll probably just let this go. But one interesting idea that they did say was that government made chemicals that create zombieism and cover ups and stuff. This could probably lead to a spin off slash crossover with a comic book that I am reading. G.I. Zombie. I think it's called Star Spangled Spanner Stories G.I. Zombie. Which sadly is on DC's cancelled list so it's going to be cancelled in just a couple months. So I don't think it will even make up to issue 10. But it's about a, G about a G.I. soldier who became a zombie some years ago so uses zombieism to infiltrate enemy bases and stuff for the government. But every once in a while he gets the urge to eat people so <laughs> the government flies out people on death row to him to eat him so he keeps his mind intact and he just goes out and jo does his job above and beyond anybody else can because he's a zombie he could push himself more do more and take more and he's done so much that he knows so much more so if they could probably incorporate that into iZombie it, to make it sort of like the same universe or maybe even a spin-off possibly because I'm pretty sure that the G.I. Zombie comics take place in the same universe as DC superheroes at the moment. Because at one point there was a zombie virus about to be released, or was just released in Gotham City, and I think they even mentioned the superheroes are too busy elsewhere in the world to stop it. So it was up to G.I. Zombie, of course, since he was already there. <clears throat> Don't know how possible that is, but I think that would probably be a really good move. Not only to help keep the, that comic alive, but also expand on their zombie universe and maybe even to the DC universe. Even though that's a bit unlikely, I think. So that's my opinion on what I thought of the show. That is just me personally, and this is the first episode, quite possibly the pilot of the show. But if like I said, if they stay like that, I won't be lasting long on this. I have my Walking Dead and as goofy as Z Nation is, and how much of the second half of the season wasn't really that good, I've, I've, that one has a lot of character and fun to it. So, um, thank you for watching. That's what I have to say about the premiere episode of iZombie.